quickly another very key aspect of um, the farmer protests is what actually happened in the Supreme Court today. The Supreme Court, while hearing uh, a plea on an aspect of the farmers' protest, said if a matter is sub judice, protests cannot be allowed. The top court was hearing a plea on the farmers' issue and said you cannot come to court and also protest outside when the government has already said that it's not implementing laws yet and there is a stay on it from the Supreme Court, then why are you protesting? The Attorney General and the Centre said there should be no further protests to prevent the unfortunate incidents like the one in Lakimpur Khedi. The Supreme Court will now examine if farmers have the right to protest when the issue of farm laws is sub judice. Let's go across now to Anjali Bhardwaj, uh, uh, who's been tracking this and following this very, very closely. What are the ramifications of this? Do you believe, based on these observations, farmers are now obliged to put, a, put an end or a stop, at least for the moment, to their farmer protests? Vishnu, I think that this is very concerning, what we heard from the Supreme Court today. Because even if we just look at the manner in which cases, petitions, which challenge the constitutionality of various laws that are passed. And let me say that these laws are actually being passed without any public consultation. And many, many sections of the population in our country are aggrieved by these laws. Yes. When there are there is a constitutional challenge to these laws in the Supreme Court, these petitions are allowed to languish. Even if we look at, let's say, the electoral bonds case, a case was filed in the Supreme Court challenging the electoral bonds in 2017. When the matter came up, the Chief Justice of India said that these this issue has very weighty matters that it raises about democracy in our country, about electoral democracy. And yet in the last four years, we haven't heard the seen the matter being heard by the Supreme Court or a judgment being made. But Anjali, now, isn't in the this meantime, matter, isn't, yes, this, in, in, isn't this in your opinion issue really settled? Because in December 2020, Justice Bob Day, had said the court, and he was talking only, he was talking about the farmer protests. This court will not interfere with the protest in question. Indeed, the right to protest is a part of a fundamental right. The right to protest can be exercised subject to public order. So that, that's a given. You can't be violent. But the right to protest, they, they, they lauded the right to protest. They upheld the right to protest. Absolutely. And there was no and mention that, you know, if it's being heard in court, then it cannot happen outside. So, and not just in that case. Uh, but was this uh, not an no. observation, Anjali? And is that what this boils down to? That there's not been an, a ruling on this issue, which is what the Supreme Court will now look at. Yes, and, I, and that's what I was saying, that it's most unfortunate that there are so many cases which are languishing and the Supreme Court is now saying that they're going to take up this question where the people's fundamental right to protest in a democracy has to be curtailed when the matter is sub -judice. Now, this is very unfortunate. Whether we look at the CAA petition or we look at any other kind of petition, which we, we the three farm laws, even now the farm laws, there's only a state the farmers have been protesting, people have been protesting, asking for repeal of these laws. The stay can be removed any day. So people have to have in a democracy the right to protest. And of course, the judiciary must do its job. And un unfortunately, Vishnu, I must say here that there also has to be a reflection of the priorities of the judiciary. The substantive matter of the constitutionality of these laws is still hanging. Right. And the court is more worried about the inconvenience caused to people because they are unable to pass those roads. So I think that we have very important issues that need to be looked at and that are raised by this by this question that has been raised by the court today. All and right. I really hope that the court looks at the substantive matters that quickly it takes up. There are more than 50 cases that are pending before the All right, actually, I take bench. the point. The court will now decide, uh, you know, on on what finally happens as far as protests are concerned while a case is being heard in the Supreme Court. I would assume it would go to a bench. I'd like to thank you very much for being with us. Earlier today, I spoke to the senior Supreme Court um, lawyer, uh, Mukul Rohudgi, the former Attorney General of India, on this very issue. And his perspective, rather different from Anjali, where he believes that, in fact, farmers should be ending their protests in light of all of this being heard in the Supreme Court.
Well, joining us now, Mr. Mukul Rodhki, Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court and a former Attorney General for India. Thanks so very much for being with us. You would have seen what the Supreme Court has actually said. It is curious if uh, I, some would suggest that the Supreme Court making this observation that they need to now decide if farmers can protest while the matter is coming up in court. The reason I say this is because it appeared to some that in 2020, Chief Justice of India, Bob Day, had in fact settled the matter when he said, and I quote, this court will not interfere with the protest in question, referring to the farmers' protest. Indeed, the right to protest is part of a fundamental right, and he spoke a little bit more. So, uh, how, how, do, how is one to understand what has happened in court today, sir? Uh, Vishnu, let me tell you very clearly, right to a non-violent protest is also a fundamental right. Mm -hmm. But moving a court is also a fundamental right. So you cannot ride two horses together. If you go to court, you move against the laws or the actions of the state or the authority or the union, asking the court to strike it down. At the same time, you cannot fire a parallel arrow and say that we will block all roads let's say, leading to the capital or leading even to a court, that is exercising extra judicial pressure mm -hmm. on the parties and on the court. It is on that principle that the court says, please choose. You have a right of Satyagraha. You have a right. Gandhiji exercise Satyagraha. You have a right of Satyagraha. You have a right of protest, non-violent protest. Do it. Write newspapers, articles, no problem. But then don't move the court. Try and bring the governments to its knees if you want to by that process. If you don't want to do that and want to go to a court, you please go and attack the actions of the government. But then don't do it simultaneously so as to exercise pressure. It is that principle which the court has rightly applied. Because it is not for the first time, let me tell you, for many, many years I have seen Lawyers protests, lawyers strikes on various issues, starting from the Kiran Bedi incident in Tisadari, when you know when there was a uh, lati charge and all. So lawyers' bodies also move courts because easy for a lawyer's body to move a court. But then the court made it clear that if you are wanting to move the court and you want us to exercise our jurisdiction to decide whether lati charge was legal or illegal, please call off the strike. And therefore, the strikes were either called off. Or if not called off, the court does not hear you any further. Right. So, so as I understand it, based on what you're telling me, if this was an entirely peaceful protest in, in or, or it didn't obstruct the movement of, of people as we are seeing outside Delhi, then these protesters, the farmers, would legally, as per the, what the Supreme Court has said today, be allowed to continue with these protests indefinitely, even if the matter was being heard. But because what the court said earlier on, right, where you cannot be... You cannot be violent, right, and protest at the same time. It's because of that ground you believe that this right is now being questioned. Is that correct? No, no I would tell you straight away. No protest can be violent. No protest is legal if it is violent, which leads to destruction of public or private property or leads to accident and leads to injuries and deaths. That's very, very clear. But the point I'm making is even a peaceful protest going on cannot at the same time at the instance of the protesters, the court should not be moved and the court should not entertain it. If the farmers are going on with the protest, please go on, but they don't move the court. Now, here is a case where courts have been moved. The court has granted some kind of a stay. The court appointed some kind of a committee some months or a year ago. I think the protest should have been called, should have been called uh, off. Uh, yes, called off. And you know, then you have faith in the court, request the court to decide it at the earliest because it's a matter of law. It's not, it's not an action of the British imperialist government against the, the, the natives. It's, it's, it's a law which has been passed and the only way the law can be set aside or struck down is either by a court or by parliament re revoking the laws. But so Mr. Roshi, excite... there, is, there is further precedent to this on the right to continue protesting. I take, I understand the point about violence, you've dealt with that. But a three-judge bench headed by Justice Sanjay Kishan Kohl on, uh, on 7th October 2020 with regard to the Shaheen Bagh protests had said, and let me quote, 
There have been protests against this legislation in Delhi and in different parts of the country. We have noted in our order that despite the law facing a constitutional challenge before this court, that by itself will not take away the right to protest of the persons who feel aggrieved by the legislation. We, however, simultaneously noted that the question was where and how the protest can be carried on without public ways being affected. Right? So that second part is clear and it's consistent. But in the first part of this observation made by the court, they've said that even if the matter lies with us, you can continue to protest. But no. you disagree with that. Yes, no, let me tell you. If the protesters have moved the court, then they can't ride two horses. But if the protesters have not moved the court, suppose the farmers, unions and associations have not moved the court. Say, suppose a lawyer has moved the court in public interest. The farmers can say, we haven't moved the court. We want our protest to go on as long as it is non-violent, peaceful and does not cause inconvenience to the public. It is very, very important. You can't go and block every road. So, okay. if, if you have if you have moved the court or your association has moved the court, then you cannot carry on a parallel protest. You choose. Okay. But if somebody else has moved, then the protesters can say, well, we have not taken recourse to a parallel uh, uh, path. Okay. And therefore, the protest. I think so, that's the only way. So, so now, sir, but this is... The final word, Vishnu, will be with the court. But I firmly believe that by carrying on a protest, even if peaceful, and at the same time moving a court, you are exercising pressure on the court, on the other party, that we are going to do this also, that also, social media also, Twitter also, that queers the pitch, so to say. All right, Mukul Rodgi speaking to me earlier on, on the day. This also moves to the Supreme Court now just in terms of the right to protest. But what actually happens on the ground? And what about the right of political leaders to actually travel to areas where these protests have taken place? We'll be tracking that very closely tomorrow.